Hello, I'm Lynn Finch with another weekly episode of the No Cash Allowance. This time we're going to talk about why allowances need to evolve. At one time we didn't have any money. We bartered to get things we wanted. Then we invented physical money, then paper money, and then plastic cards, and now just invisible money, money that we can't see or touch. This, over time, has created a longer learning curve for our kids because we add new ways to spend and receive money. We never replace the other ones. So there's more to know about. A survey by T. Rowe Price shows that a majority of parents agree that because of technology, kids today think of currency differently than they did growing up. Then what are allowances for? Why do we give kids money? Well, I looked into the history of allowances and found some interesting ideas. Allowances started, well, maybe over a century ago when parenting experts and economic experts recommended that kids have some money. A lot of it was they should have money so they can learn how to spend some money and learn how to save money. They can also learn a respect for money, uh, some fiscal responsibility, benevolence, I found an interesting thread about consumerism that learning to save would let kids buy more expensive goods and that consumer spending indicated a well-adjusted personality, but excessive thriftiness showed a lack of imagination. Also, the savings, the habitual savings has been a part of the allowance conversation forever. In fact, at one time, Public schools had saving banks and compulsory savings was part of the public school curriculum. So what I'm seeing is there's been no real agreement on what is the purpose of allowances. Now, I believe that parents need to treat allowances as an educational tool to use in their home to prepare their kids to be adults. Managing money as a number is not learned overnight at age 18. A survey recently shows that the average allowance for kids is $30 a week. Now, a lot of this is spent by teens because they naturally have most of the, more of the money and they spend it on food and clothing on an average of $2,250 a year. That's quite a lot of spending power. Now, how can parents use allowances as an educational tool to prepare their kids for adulthood? Well, they need a regular supply of funds, and these funds can come from various sources. There is cash, there are checks, there are credit cards, there are debit cards. And because they're growing up and learning a skill as they're growing up, they need to have increased responsibility as they grow up. I recommend that teenagers have control of most of their day-to-day -day spending in their allowance system. And by this time, they're probably using debit cards and, and a bank, but still they're responsible for their day-to-day -day management of money. And what is different now than when allowance experts started talking about money a century ago is that we can't see all the money. So the timing, and the tracking of the money as a number is the skill kids need to learn. A literary critic, Lionel Trilling, tells us, we invented money and we use it, yet we cannot understand its laws or control its actions. It has a life of its own. Oh, yeah, I think we all know that by now. And here's my story about a kid using a no cash allowance. This is a little boy, he's about four years old. He was just starting to get his allowance and his mom was paying him with physical cash, as I recommend, because it's a great way to introduce money and math. And there are a lot of fun activities you can play with money that teaches kids math as you go along. Well, he was getting his allowance in coins and he would figure out how much he had and then he would drop them in his piggy bank, and then 
he would write the number in a little account book that he created all by himself. Maybe he just didn't trust the piggy bank. But he was tracking money as a number when he was four years old. When your kids track all their money as a number, they become better money managers. The link for the corresponding blog can be found in the description below. And next time, this truth about money will help your kids learn to manage money. Thanks for listening.